In October 1979, Gerhard Schmerz and Hannelore Schmitz from West Germany climbed Mount Everest, the highest mountain on Earth. They were the first couple to set foot atop Everest. However, tragedy struck when Hannelore Schmitz died while descending the mountain. In addition, Ray Janet, a mountain guide from the US, also died on the way down to base camp. This is their story of triumph and tragedy on Everest. The Swabian Everest Expedition 1979 included eight climbers and five surfers. The expedition was leading by Dr. Gerhard Schmitz of West Germany. Other members were Nick Banks, 27, a mountaineering instructor and guide from New Zealand, Hans Van Kennel, 38, a businessman from Switzerland, Tillman Fischbach, 30, an analytical chemist and medical student from West Germany, Gunther Kamp, 46, a mechanical engineer from West Germany, Dr. Hermann Worth, 38, a lecturer from West Germany, Hannelore Schmitz, 39, housewife from West Germany, and Ray Janet, 48, a mountaineering and hunting guide from the US. Gerhard Schmerz and Hannelore Schmerz had met Ray Janet in 1978 while climbing Mount McKinley. Janet had summited Mount McKinley 35 times. He was an expert guide. After their arrival in Nepal, however, the Ministry of Tourism informed them that they would not be allowed to leave Kathmandu until August 10th at the earliest. Furthermore, forced monsoon expeditions were not allowed to establish base camp before September 1st. After top negotiations, they were allowed to begin their 250 km long march, which normally takes 20 days. They set up from Kathmandu on 31st July. After setting up their base camp at 5,300 meters on 31st August, they set out to explore the Kamvu ice wall in order to make it possible with ladders and fixed ropes. The snow and ice condition were miserable. Nevertheless, they were able to set up their first high camp on 4 September at approximately 5,900 meters above the ice pool. They had to cross huge crevasses and many vertical walls before they could set up camp 2 at about 6,300 meters on 7 September. Camp 3 was pitched at about 7,200 meters on the Lutze wall on 12 September. The team set up their last high camp at South Col on 24 September. According to Gerhard Schmerz, even before the start of the expedition, Hannelore had repeatedly named the South Col as her destination. Hannelore was in excellent physical condition and she too wanted to try to reach the summit. But in order to be able to turn back at any time without depriving one of her comrades of the chance to reach the summit, she wanted to go with two experienced surfers as an independent rope team. When they had already made all the preparation for the final phase after setting up the camp on the south call, they were forced to descend to base camp by a snowstorm that lasted several days. There they decided, in order to be faster, to go in groups of two instead of three. In addition to Gerhard Schmerz, Hermann and Hans, the first group included two surfers. They wanted to take over the track work and not burden Hanalore with it. The second group consisted of the remaining five participants and three surfers. On September 28, the weather improved and they climbed again. After a three-day climb, 
the first group reached the camp at South Col. On October 1st, after a decent night's sleep, they started getting ready for the summit at around 3 a.m. Preparations took time, but above all, the making of tea took much longer in that oxygen for air than in the lower camps. At 6 o'clock, they were finally ready to leave. Herman, Lakfa Sharfa, and Hans walked on one roof, Gerhard Schmutz walked on the other, followed by Sharpa Pertemba. Around 12 o'clock, they reached the south summit of Mount Everest, 8,760 meters. From there, they saw the razor sharp ice ridge and then the so called Hillary Stiff. Due to stiffness and bad snow conditions, they had difficulties at Hillary Stiff. At around 2 pm, they reached the summit, overjoyed. They hugged each other and were very happy about the success. After about an hour, they left and started the descent. Again, the Hillary step was the trickiest part. At around 7 p.m., they made it back to the south coal in the dark. The second group arrived there in the afternoon and intended to set up for the summit the next morning. They congratulated them on their success and shared their happiness. When Hanalor congratulated Gerhard, he and the Sharfa told her about the bad snow and ice conditions. They asked her to give up her determination to go to the summit. Hanalor was a bit annoyed and they didn't insist further. Gunther, who was hearing their debate, referred to Hanalor's good condition and said that today she rose from Camp 3 to the South Coal and a very good time without any difficulty. After the conversation, they crawled into their tents to get some well-deserved sleep. The second summit party began their preparation as early as 2 am. They left the camp at around 5 am. Ilmen and Sherfa Angforva were the first group team. Nick, Gunther and Ray Sikan and Hanalor with two Sherfas. Ang Jangbu and Sundar third. The rest were descended as quickly as possible from the death zone to Camp 2, which was almost 2,000 meters below. They kept looking up at the sky with concern because the weather was getting worse and worse. All members climbed close together and in deteriorating weather reached the summit between 1 pm and 1.30 pm. The weather condition at the top were initially better than the first party had suspected further down. Benthar chatted with Hanalor shortly before the Aru party reached the summit. He had the impression that she was far from exhaustion and was in good physical condition. As the weather deteriorated, everyone only stayed at the summit for a short time. Thick cloudy condition on the summit mean the group could only spend 10 minutes taking photographs and shaking hands before climbing down as their oxygen tanks emptied. Nick Banks became the second New Zealander and the 104th son to climb Mount Everest after Sir Edmund Hillary in 1953. In 1977, Banks was a member of the New Zealand Everest expedition which reached the South Col. The trip laid the foundation for the successful ascent two years later. Banks became friends with Gerhard Schmitz and his wife Hanalor, who invited him to join their Everest expedition in 1979. A very short time was spent on the summit and the descent was begun in quite heavy snow but moderate wind. 
when the first group team of the summit group was back at the South Goal at around 6 p.m., the radio message came in that Hanalore was at the summit along with everyone else. The rest of the expedition members celebrated their success exuberantly. They realized that their average expedition was the smallest in number to reach the summit, including Hanalore as the first German and fourth woman worldwide, and Gerhard Schmutz, the first person older than 50. And for the first time, a married couple reached the summit. However, their joy was dampened when their comrades announced via walkie-talkie at around 9.30 p.m. that Sharfa Ang Jangbo, upon reaching the South Call, reported that Ray, Hanalore, and Sharfa Sundar would be bivouacking at the Southeast Ridge. They immediately instructed the Sharfas of NKM3 to ascend to South Call as soon as possible the next morning in order to be able to provide assistance if necessary. Nevertheless, their worries were limited. Since Ray was there, he was considered an absolute expert on Mount McKinley and question of survival in building snow caps. The descent over the south summit was also normal. Ray, who had ascended alone, had joined Hanalore's group team on the way back. Later, when he ran out of oxygen at an altitude of about 8,500 meters, he refused to go any further. He wanted to bivouac. The Sherpas, who were expert guides and knew the mountain well, urged them to move down to South Cole as it was risky to stay in the dead zone. Moreover, the weather conditions were bad. Normally at such dizzy heights, it is not uncommon to see snowstorms that would generate all of a sudden. Yet another risky factor was snow avalanche. Reginet and Hanalore were determined to spend the night within the death zone. Sherfa Sindare stayed with them while Ang Jangbo Sherpa descended to the south goal. Ray tried to dig a snow cave but he was unsuccessful due to soft snow. Then they foot out their sleeping bags without cover and tried to sleep. As darkness fell, a furious storm set in that lasted all night. Temperature plummeted drastically below zero and survival got to be a tough job considering the height. The following morning, Ray died from hypothermia. His body was eventually buried by the snow. Hanalore and Sundar survived the night, but they were in bad conditions. They were depressed and had to leave Janet's body and continue the descent. Hanalore, who was exhausted, sat down at around 8,300 meters to take a nap against her backpack. She fell asleep and never woke up. Reportedly, her last words were, water, water. Sandair stayed with her body, casting him most of his fingers and toes. At that point, Sharfa Ang Nawang, coming from Camp 3, and Telmen Pishwak were already climbing above the south coal to bring help. When they met Sharfa Sandair, he made the announcement that they all couldn't believe. Since he too was close to dying of exhaustion and had obviously suffered from frostbite, the two ascending ones immediately took care of him and brought him to the camp. Gerhard Schmitz had to witness all of this and came too under the southwest face of Mount Everest without the slightest chance of being able to do anything. He was so stunned that he only vaguely realized the scope and tragedy of what had happened. Of course, one always hears about tragic accidents that abruptly tear apart a close human connection. 
but even being affected by it in such a misanthropic place and in such an extreme situation is another hardly imaginable dimension. Hanelor and Gerhard were closely connected for 20 years, not only in everyday life but also and in especially in dangerous situation in the mountains of the world on almost every continent. Despite his bewilderment, he was forced to continue what Hanelor had done so far with so much commitment. Nevertheless, the team came home. Gerhard Schmelz, however, all alone without his beloved Hanelor. A long, successful, but infinitely tragic path had come to an end. Hanelor Schmitz became one of the many bodies on the southeast ridge of Mount Everest called Rainbow Valley due to the number of bodies all wearing colorful and bright snow gear to be still found there. Janet's body disappeared and has never been found, but for years Schmitz's remains could be seen by anyone attempting to summit Everest by the southern route. Her body was frozen in a sitting position, leaning against her backpack with eyes open and hair blowing in the wind, about 100 meters above Camp 4. In 1984, police inspector Yugendra Bahadur Taffa and Sharfa Ang Dorje fell to their deaths while trying to recover Schmutz's body on a Nepalese police expedition. Schmidt's body was seen leaning on her backpack, frozen in that position with her eyes open. Chris Bonington spotted Schmutz from a distance in 1985 and initially mistook her body for a tent until he got a closer look. The high winds eventually swept down Hanalore's body to the Kangsheng face and it was lost forever. Hanelor Schmidt was the first woman and the first German to die high on Mount Everest. Thank you all so much for watching this video. And if you enjoy it, please leave a like and comment below. If you want to watch more content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel for more such content to come.